Trying to decide whether you want to work for a small or large engineering company as a graduate can be a really tough choice because you don't have a lot of experience. Many people would just default to applying to the larger companies because that's what seems like the obvious choice. But there's many pros and cons to both when trying to find the right environment that will best suit you. In this video, I'm going to share with you my perspective as a graduate structural engineer on seven of the things you should consider when choosing between small and large engineering companies as a graduate. All right, let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the type of projects you'll work on. As a general rule of thumb, the larger the company is, the larger the projects will be that you'll work on. Although, regardless of company size, what really determines what type of work you'll be doing is the type of projects that the company targets. For example, some of these targets could be residential housing, skyscrapers, bridges, or government and defense force jobs. And if you're unsure what type of projects a company usually works on, a quick and easy way to find out is to go to the company's website and have a look at the past projects they've got published. It's really important to do your research and find out exactly what type of projects a company does prior to working there. This is especially true for graduates because in those early years, you're learning so much and it's important that you're getting a variety of work so you don't get stuck in a niche early in your career. Okay, so next let's talk about resources. Okay, so firstly, generally at larger companies, your access to extra training and opportunities is greater because of their increased budget and also their ability to cover your absence. This means that these larger companies, you might be able to attend specialist training sessions and also attend short courses that are fully paid for by your employer. Also at larger companies, because of the increase in the number of staff, this also typically means that there's gonna be a greater number of experienced engineers around. And for us graduates, this means that there's more people available to mentor us both professionally and technically. Since there's going to be more senior engineers around, it's going to be easier for you to ask questions and also get your work checked so you don't get stuck on any of the tasks you're doing. At smaller companies, while resources will be limited, you will get the opportunity to get involved in a bunch of things that usually you wouldn't ever do or just get involved in at the graduate level at these bigger companies. For example, these types of things can include looking at the finances, attending client meetings, and also getting involved with the sketching and modeling. A potential pro and con of working at a smaller company is that the quantity of work you'll be expected to complete will be greater because there's less people for it to be shared around with. This can be a pro in the sense that you'll learn a lot more because you'll be constantly thrown in the deep end and you'll just have to figure it out. But it can also be a con in the sense that this will add an additional layer of stress to the job because as you're still trying to build a strong technical foundation, tasks take you a lot longer to complete and around deadlines, this is gonna feel like a lot more pressure. All right, next let's talk about the pay and benefits. In my experience, the pay difference between small and large companies for graduates in the same type of work is only very minor. In fact, there isn't really a better option in this regard because after talking to a number of other graduates from both small and big companies, the better pay can actually go both ways. If you really wanna get into it, a couple of the factors which might see a graduate doing the same type of work get paid more than another could be their location and also the hours they work. Okay, and now the benefits. Generally at smaller companies, there's not many of these, but things they might cover are your professional registration costs or a membration cost to a professional engineering organization. At larger companies, both of those things will definitely be paid for and you'll also have access to a range of corporate discounts as well as usually better paid parental leave options. Typically as a graduate, the benefits aren't gonna be a huge factor in your decision, but depending on your circumstances, they might be something you should consider. Next, let's talk about job stability. Now, job stability probably isn't one of those things that as graduates, we take into a lot of consideration, but as we've seen over the last couple of years, things can change pretty quickly. So it might be something you want to take more seriously. Generally speaking, larger companies are better at withstanding economy changes and won't feel the pressure of cutting jobs if things take a sudden downturn. Although layoffs definitely still happen within large companies and on a large scale, Often it doesn't happen immediately like it does in small companies, so you do have some time to react. Despite the fact that smaller companies definitely do feel market fluctuations greater, often they won't let you go unless they absolutely have to because the person who's making the decision you'll have a personal relationship with and they will know the effect that it will have on you and potentially your family. At larger companies, because you can be seen as just a number, even if this decision isn't absolutely necessary, sometimes they will use this opportunity to let go of staff. All right, now let's talk about career outlook. In smaller companies, after you've spent those first few years doing a lot of grunt work and you've now built a really solid technical foundation, you've probably got your eyes set on the pay and the title of a senior engineering role. And depending on whether the company has seen a lot of growth over those past couple of years, 
this position might simply not exist. And on the other side of things, larger companies will often have a bunch of these roles available and wanting to fill them. And depending on your relocation preferences, you'll probably be able to snag up one of these roles pretty quickly because they'll know that you have a strong technical foundation from being at a smaller company. And if you're already at a larger company, you'll know that these roles exist and they'll be easy for you to move into. And also at these larger companies, there's lots of non-technical roles. So if you've found that the technical side of things isn't quite right for you, there's plenty of other support roles that you can do too. Okay, next let's talk about the different opportunities you get. So one of the key differences between a small and a large company is that a large company will often have offices and employees all around the world. One of the cons of working for a smaller company is that if you need to relocate for any reason or you want to relocate for any reason, it's very likely that you'll need to find a new job. This doesn't always have to be the case with larger companies because depending on where you're moving, you may still be able to be a part of the same team and work from a different office or easily integrate into a new team without switching companies. Likewise, if you're just wanting to travel more and experience new cities or countries, often larger companies offer secondments and exchange programs. All right, so the last thing I wanna to touch on is the culture. This is something that's really hard to scope out as a graduate because often you don't know anyone at the company and you haven't built a strong network of engineers that you can ask for opinions. Although there are some general remarks that I can let you in on. At smaller companies, the culture is gonna make or break your experience because you work very closely with all your colleagues and the people you work with aren't very likely to change. And at larger companies, while the overall company might have a bit of a stigma about it, the culture is really gonna vary depending on what team you're in. Also at those bigger companies, because there's usually a higher turnover in staff and the teams are always is getting bigger, sometimes there's a lack in those close personal relationships, so the team dynamics aren't as strong as they would be in smaller companies. And this is the opposite at smaller companies where you know all your colleagues personally and interacting with them feels a lot less transactional because you've often built a relationship with them first. If making the workplace feel like it's a second home is important to you and having a close relationship with the people that you work with is something that you value, then working at a larger company may make you feel distant because it's very easy to get lost among the crowd. All right, so that brings me to the end of the considerations I think you should make when choosing between big or small engineering companies as a graduate engineer. Just as a final note, don't get too bogged down in this decision because while it will help if you can make the right decision the first time, you can always course correct later once you've got a bit more experience underneath your belt. Also, if you're interested in learning about the types of things that you should be including on your resume when applying to intern and graduate engineering roles, Check out this video I made here where I break down everything you need to include and I also provide a template for you. And if you wanna find out some unique ways that you can land an internship or graduate position without applying to jobs online, check out this video I made here. Okay, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.